At first glance, this ritual seems like a traditional form of bungee jumping. But after watching the first diver crash into the earth and the crowd erupt, it's obvious that what's happening here on Pentecost Island is something entirely different. Bungee jumping has never defied death this dramatically. This is Nangol, which means land diving. It's an accurate description. The diver's goal is to bless the soil by skimming the earth with the top of his head. As a journalist, I'm fascinated with traditional cultures and strange rituals. Pentecost is ideal for both. My journey begins on a small plane. After landing on a grass airfield, I hire one of the island's few vehicles to get me to the jump site. Difficult road. Oh, yes. So very, very difficult. Up there is very difficult. Yes. The 70 foot wooden tower is built in a jungle clearing and overlooks the Pacific Ocean. High up on the tower, one of the event's organizers, Rene, tells me about the taboos that surround the Nangol. Uh, there are several, several rules that before you jump, you, 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 might, you are not allowed to do. Uh, first of all, man and wo man, a man that is going to jump, he's not allowed to, to sleep with any woman. And secondly, no woman is allowed to go to, to the area where the tower is uh, erected. When, when, whenever you, you, are, you are on the, the tower ready to jump, if you have second thoughts, that means you, you must not jump. Because if you have second thoughts, that's when problems occur. The next morning I wake up to drum beats. The two-day Nangol ceremony is about to start. It's also Pentecost weekend on Pentecost Island and the locals have assured me of a special celebration. At noon, the land divers begin the Nungles opening dance into Lotha Fala. Most communities in Pentecost are Christian, but traditional ways and superstitions are still a strong part of the culture. The ceremony continues with a song between the jumpers and the villagers. Next follows a play where a good spirit overcomes a mud-covered demon. Among the other forms of entertainment are the local string and drumming bands. It's a good chance to capture the beautiful faces and festive moments. Soon it's time for the Nangol. Everyone migrates to the jump site outside the village. I follow closely behind the female dancers. According to tradition, only men are allowed to dive. Because they come from different villages, their dress can vary. Some divers wear loincloths, others the more revealing nambas. When a diver gets ready to jump, he's encouraged with singing and dancing from supporters near the tower. These dancers are other jumpers, as well as worried mothers and wives. The first diver greets the crowd like a rock star. Behind me, the spectators roar. The Nangol happens only once a year in this area of Pentecost, and the 300 people in the crowd are ecstatic. The first dive goes smoothly. The boy hits the ground hard, but he's okay. His friends quickly grab him and free his ankles. The second dive is much different. Some of the young boys question whether the vines are strong enough. The dancing stops, and the older, more experienced divers consider the problem. Eventually, the vines get the go-ahead, and the jump proceeds. But danger looms. On the way down, a vine snaps, and the young boy slams face first into the earth. Everyone rushes to help, but he's not responding. He's unconscious. The last time a Pentecost land diver was killed was in 1974. But people injure themselves in this ritual 
every year, sometimes seriously. As I film this young boy crashing into the ground from 50 feet, I know he's hurt himself. My only hope is that he's not dead. I decide to keep my cameras rolling, even though I might be capturing a tragedy. Cold water is poured on the boy's head to revive him. Luckily, he starts showing signs of life. He can't stand on his own, but he is conscious. After three minutes, he limps away, helped by friends and brothers. Everyone breathes a sigh of relief. Soon the dancing and land diving continue. One of the elders gets caught up in the mood and decides to jump next. Divers under the tower soften the soil with long sticks in case his vines fail. For a long time, the experienced diver stands on the tower, building anticipation in the crowd and inviting them to regain their enthusiasm. Eventually, he makes the leap. It's a perfect dive and he lands safely. After another jump, it's my turn to join the action. Westerners aren't allowed to participate, but I'm not going to let that stop my camera from making a dive. The chief grants me permission to tie a small camera to a diver's leg. It's an unprecedented moment. Nobody remembers it ever being done before. The crowd loves it. Once the camera is recording, the young man climbs the tower. At the top, vines are attached to his legs. After a few moments, he makes the dive. Yes, good job. Very good. Very good. Let's see if it's clean. Oh, great. You did good. Very good. Thank you. you okay? Okay, good. Good job. Good job. I'll let you guys take it off. <laughs> there are more dives coming. All this excitement has made me thirsty. Not surprisingly, there's a traditional refreshment stand that overlooks the tower. I sample South Pacific's staple drink. Between dives, I get a chance to speak with the young man who wore my camera on his dive. He tells me about his jumps in the local language, Raga. The first dive was great. The second dive, I broke a vine. But as long as I am not hurt, everything is going well. I am a lucky man. In the afternoon, the last jump takes place. The finale is by one of the most experienced divers in Pentecost. He's been diving for decades. He lunges from the tower confidently and lands safely. Everyone goes wild. When it's over, the kids swarm the tower, dreaming of the day when they'll be old enough to also be land divers. Sorry. After all the excitement, a pig is cooked to celebrate a successful nongo. There's more dancing, and I'm in for a long night of festivity. As I drink my kava, I can't help but think about those perilous land dives and the joy I felt when they made safe landings. The Nongo is Vanuatu's culture at its most daring. Men defying death in an unusual and spectacular way. <laughs>